Build two fairly good. And the wave of terror from Venge is surprisingly useful, especially at defending those early T1 towers because it draws the aggro from the creep wave. So mm -hmm. if they're relying on a creep wave to tank it up, you can draw the aggro off. And one of the nice things that it does make Venge a decent support against pushes. But it's also terrific if you've got a hero that can clean up those camps. And uh, this looks like an aggro trial lane to me. Uh, you can leave the SB on the top lane, run the Razor in the mid, then run Lashrak, VS, and Lina together. VS, the setup stun, obviously, and then you got Lina and Lashrak, the two AoE stuns that. Whoever's controlling this is gone. And you got another hero too, which is capable of pulling the creep wave off with uh, lightning from the track. Yeah, there's a lot of just nuke damage coming out of the C deck land. They are very squishy with that trial lane with the, oh, more, more, more worrisome in the mid, mid game where you're up against yep. a Ravage and Sonic wave. That's where I feel CX lineup is going to have to be very cautious about what kind of fights they take. That, that's, that's when they should switch out. Like you, if you run the aggro trial lane to start with, get a couple of kills. Take the tier one tower, so get an earlier point up in, in Edict for the track. I know it's not the most common build that's been done of late. It's been more the Split Earth and Lightning kind of build. Yep. Uh, but you're going to need that to bring down the tower. The Lena and the VS won't help you with that. And then uh, you move up to the top lane. Let the track finally finish up something like that. Bloodstone, Razor, don't move anywhere. Stay there. The VS and Lena can rotate to you. Uh, get that advantage up whoever is in that lane. And the Spirit Break can start roaming as well. And maybe that's when you start having this three-man gank squad. Uh, or you you just push the tier one tower in the top lane and just start taking out tower after tower because Tongfu want to push and you need to restrict their movement and you also need to push them back which means you need levels and you need control map oh last pick on night stalker means fourth position night port night stalker it looks like yeah melody lover and yeah normally on that support role so okay Something a bit different coming out, and I think the other big worry for Seek is when that push starts coming their way, they haven't got the best way to engage and try and take a fight. Spirit Breaker's charge is their only really option there, and there's a mm -hmm. DK with a ranged stun. They have just the ability to draw the Spirit Breaker into them and kind of put, put him in an odd position. That's where Seek can't really engage outside of the Spirit Breaker, which means I feel like they have another plan in mind for dealing with the, the mid game, which may just be coming out from dominating the lanes and getting off to a good start, yep. such that, hey, you may push down a T1 tower here or there, but we've suddenly got a 5k gold lead and we're just going to outfarm you on the I, map. I think that's actually the only thing they can do, because if they try and play the, the delayed game up against Tongfu and like farm up the strike, farm up the Razor, Chen's going to come out of that jungle very early on, yep. push the tower, you're forced then to bring the heroes down. So even if it's just the VS with the wave of terror trying to pull the creep wave off, the Chen army he's gonna stay alive maybe you can get one of the trolls so then you got skeleton minions to also help you keep control of the lane uh or to keep sorry keep uh, life points on that lane so you can keep pushing out the tower uh and when you do that then when all the heroes move off dk pops dragon form the tier one talent's only gonna get whittled down and i'm just gonna see this nev like this march it's a very very slow march but a march nonetheless to sidic's death so i think they have to get aggressive here there's no other choice for them with the draft yeah and, and even and if it's not an aggro trial and they can just roam the supports a lot, get early smokes, which Garda already has on the Ventral Spirit. Mm -hmm. You could run a standard Spirit Breaker off lane, Razor mid, less track safe lane, as long as the Garda and Q are rotating around the map very constantly and finding kills wherever they can. Well, let's have our walk into the jungle. And what wards we got with us? Two sentries over on the VS and two observers over on the, yep. on the Lena. So... Watch their positions very, very closely. You've already got Kabu, who's getting as much information as possible uh, without risking his life. So he sits just high enough he can see them coming and then get away to safety if he requires. Uh, the Observer is also down. Melody Love is going to be the first one to see Aggressive moving in his little track. And they start planning down their wards. So they block up. They've only, got blo only blocked up one camp, but they're moving in for the, late for the other one with the Sentry Ward. And there's no way for Melody Lovers, unless he can see... Okay, he's, he actually managed to get the vision of the VS walking away. So they'll have to know that there's going to be a sentry wall blocking that other camp. And in fact, Chen's already in position to deward it. Yep. And yeah, gets down the preemptive one, so we'll get that first spawn, which is always really nice that you can stack it early on. You can fit, find out kind of what creep you're going to get and make a plan from there, so... So you do get the magic bush ward down, so they'll be blocking off uh, a couple camps with that. It's actually impossible now for Tongfu to run a safe lane, because they can't pull. Uh, you got one sentry left, and it cannot de ward both these wards. Yep. So the question is going to be does he get the sentry or the observer? Because the observer is going to block up this camp for six and a half minutes, I where at least the sentry, oh. and he actually gets neither. Yeah. So, uh, balls. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that means that he, can get, he, can, <laughs> he can get a satyr, or he can get an alpha. <laughs> That's all. He'll be, he'll be back in time if he wants to sack this as well, but it looks right, like he'll take this. Melody. 
Be really careful here on the bottom lane. They've already yep. got the first ones. Carboo's actually assembly blocking Don't up block his teammate. Oh. He actually took a damage for it. Is there another stun? Not available. And they're getting in close, but not close enough to finish the job. While Tidehunter on the top, I think that was the one you were looking at, dropped very, very low as well. Okay, so... <laughs> That's one thing I didn't think what about for C-Deck. You've actually got really strong dual lanes, because yeah. you've got, you got one setup and one follow-up stun with both of the dual lanes here of C-Deck. And here they go again. Carbu's now the man to get caught out, and they waited perfectly for it. And that's your first blood on the on the bottom lane. They're just they're so well positioned for this too. Already two clarities as well on Garda, so he's just going to clarity back up. That'll give him another two stuns just from one clarity. This is looking like a really good off lane for C deck. The safe lane they're zoning out tight, preventing him from farming. Two of the th three of the three lanes are going to go amazingly well. Even the razor at mid oh. should have a great time. Yeah, Chen Chenaras is a bit annoying and painful, but. He has boots up already, can easily static link a lot of damage, and once he has a bottle up, he'll be fine against the constant harass. Yeah, and, and now it's actually such a smart pickup too, because you can get the boots at the very, very start, and you know the DK is not doing that. The DK needs to have his bottle because he relies on breathe fire to farm the lane. So you can take away all of his damage normally, or potentially find yourself with a kill just because of the damage output, but it forces uh, U9 off the lane multiple times. And that's what it's all about. You restrict his farm because your other two lanes have already shown they're going to be very, very successful. Well, this bottom lane is a bit of a death trap for Kabu. The safe lane farmer for this team not going to be finding much farm against this duo. Be very careful with that blink usage as well to make sure he doesn't get more. If he uses it too late and gets stunned, he may get burst down before he pops it, but he also doesn't want to be just wasting it and putting that long cooldown into play. He's at least got a little bit of help if uh, Night Stalker can do it. He's just picked up the haste room from the bottom river. And he might be looking in towards the Razor, but okay, I think he's Such realized that kill, there's, there's, yeah. not, there's not the space for it. The Shadow Strike from, from, uh, from Kabu, trying to battle up against the track, but in comes the Night Stalker, and this is actually a kill here. There's no way for him to get back out again without the VS stunning, and then the follow-up stun, but they throw out the Lightning, and there's your Blink to Scream. Kabu's going to find it, Garda, the support coming in from the Chen, Kabu, the Stick Charges keep him alive, and now it's going to be Garda in trouble, battling up against Melody, he took aggro from the Creep Wave, that's why he dropped down low, but it'll be Chen with a physical damage from the Sata that will, in fact, get the kill on that bot lane. Okay, let's try getting a bit too aggressive. Also, just took a bit too long to use the Tango. When you get, go in like that, you want to be using that Tango as early as possible. <laughs> what happened? They were hanging around way too long. Oh. Aggressive was coming in with a level 2 Lightning, and it, it should have been enough damage to kill off Carbo, or at least slow him down long enough that you can get an attack in. And if it bounced, then it would have been a double Ooh. kill onto Melody, who is very, very low as well. Well, Kabu now healed back up after some Tango's clarities. He'll be at least in somewhat fighting shape for a bit longer. And Tongfu at least bounced back with that safe lane getting turned around. But looking at the CSs, this is not, not a pretty sight for Tongfu. You'd expect your mid lane bottle crowing DK to be getting pretty good CS against the Rays, even with the mismatch. But other than that, the lanes are going abysmally for them. I'm actually wondering too if DK is having to expend a lot of his bottle charges for health and not just for mana. So he has to wait it out. They'll battle for the top room, but he can't stick around here. The Dragon Tail stun will come in. Actually, maybe he can with the Illusion Room, but the Static Link's going to start and Nespi's on the charge. And all Razor has to do is keep up with him. And yeah, we do hit Nighttime, which means Nightstalker's got a little bit of extra buff up. But Razor, they're locking him down. SB can't make any more space. There is a stun from the Light Striker Ray, but at the same time, Dragon Tail comes back off cooldown. Charge was two seconds away and he decides it's TP out. There's no more stuns. And with the rival of the Queen of Pain, there's no more joy here either to be had for the Lena, who's chased down by this Nightstalker in Tom. Fu, off to a really, really good start with kills. Yes. Still not with the lights. They're still not really ahead at the moment is the thing. Even with this 4-1 to one kill kill lead, it's not really... It's a bit of momentum, I guess. They're probably thinking we can go from this and get a few more kills, but they need to not be kind of baited into thinking, okay, we're, we've got the advantage, let's keep being aggressive because... On the side of C-Deck, they're getting a lot more farm all across their three core heroes. DK is the only one who's doing decently well still. And your Queen of Pain has started rotating when she was meant to be farming the safe lane. It's now actually gone all the way top lane. and The lanes have fallen apart from Tongfu, and that's where they've resorted to this, this unpredictable ganking. You have a Queen of Pain who's meant to be safe lane ro rotating around, a Night Stalker who is going to be doing this anyways, but it's just very unpredictable play from Tongfu, which is where they get kills, but mm -hmm. kills currently is not translating into a lead. Well, if, if you ever feel like you're behind in a game, you've got to cause a chaos factor. Yep. Hey, it, it's not the securest way to ever win a game of Dota, but it's at least a way where you can take out a team who 
just is has so much stability in what they've drafted and how they're playing. Now in the middle lane, Shiki, Melody Lovers is right behind him. He does have the vision of the high ground there, but now he will be able to get it, and that's going to be the Void. The Troll Trapper is a little bit too far away, and he's going to get himself in range. Then with the follow-up Centaur stun, but the SP charging in, he can't make enough space here. The Slave will do some level of chip damage, but then a Kabu, a double screen with that Shadow Strike, slowing down the Lina, and Lina, she's got a Light Strike array available. It's going to slow up Kabu as well as Melody Lovers. And um, this buys enough space for Exy to get a little bit further back to the tier two. This is just Night Stalker in a nutshell, what he can do. He's just wreaking havoc all over C Deck wherever he goes. It's even before nighttime hit, he got those couple of kills at bottom lane. Now that's nighttime, he's finding a lot of pressure towards mid lane, and Shiki starting to kind of struggle to keep up with the Dragonite. Despite the good lane, he's now kind of given away that advantage of his with those two deaths. What's, what's your hotkeys for, for graphs? <laughs> uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've modified them. Kabu is going to drop up on the top lane. So uh, they, we finally bring two calls into the oh. one lane. Yeah, what's your hotkeys you, for graphs? That was, that was Kip. That was, uh, that was base Kip? Yep, you need to talk with him. That bastard. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I, I, I found one of the keys. <laughs> Eventually, the struggle I, is real. <laughs> all, all of his graphs are, are exactly the same. That's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Actually, I know that he uses his numpad a little bit more. Ha 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 ha! Ah, I found him. It's one and two. Okay. Yeah. So, Tom has actually gotten a lot back for this, but the net worth's still not reaching up too far. And that for me is still a bit of a problem at the moment. The fact that CDEC, I, I know CDEC's earlier game is looking good. Uh, but Tongfu right now, their Chen isn't really focused on pushing. They're not doing what I thought they were going to do, which was this whole, like, timing style push anyway. So, CDX managed to find the levels enough where they can repel any kind of push. Yeah. Three points up in the Plaza Field is going to be more than enough. And you got Alina even with two points up in Slave. So, most Alina of the Greek wave will be dead. Um, okay, yeah, well... well just a smoke through the river. I think Lina was going down south to do some warding. And uh, ran right into the smoke. Well, they're going to get Chen. another two. We're, we're at the last point of night time. Fortification up for the Dire side, but it's going to be... Oh, nice stun. Stops the Void, which means now Melody will have to take a little bit more damage from the tower. Also being charged, and Red's going to take it off him. Ravage is available, hitting very hard and aggressive. Ensures the kill for the Tidehunter. This and Kabu is here as well. They're coming in way too quick, and the Sonic Wave. Aggressive is a big kill to take, but another Wire Strike Array going to connect here from Q. Kabu with a scream. He can't finish the job. Aggressive will stay alive, and SB wants to keep going for this. Charges down. The Troll Trap's not in time, and you actually hit Daytime as well. Lena way too deep, but it's going to be fine. They still find the better trade-off kill, bringing down that Night Stalker who's been involved in so many kills already. He's actually been involved in eight out of the nine kills of Tongfu. Yeah, that's been really impressive stuff coming out from him and does give some breathing room for Cedic. Those, those kills they get, good use of uh, the first Ravage from Tongfu, but didn't quite have the follow-up damage he needed as Queen of Pain showed up with a Sonic Wave after the Tide was kind of already in over his head. And while well, all that's going on, Shiki's taking away the mid lane, getting some more catch-up farm, has phase boots now coming out and uh, just trying to do what the best he can as far as kind of looking to stabilize now that the early game didn't go as well as Cedic would have liked. So I see the Higgin have another crack right now in bottom lane. It's a hay strewn on a DK, which means he'll get in range here of the Spirit Breaker. The Troll has to move up. A little bit of a missed micro as he went backwards, but the Centaur's still going to get there in time. With the Breathe Fire, the Spirit Breaker, he's got Stick Charges available in the Razor. Wow, he's actually into the tree line, and Unai cannot chase in any deeper. He'll actually end up surviving. He wants to. He, he's having a second peek. He has the audacity to peek twice, and he's going to pay for it right now. The Chen, they're stunning him up so he can't hand of God, and that's going to make it a little bit easier to kill off U9. The troll, the centaur, is chasing up the Lena. He'll end up killing him off as well. There was a Dragonite who had the poison breath on him, that toxic attack, which will end up getting that kill. But at the same time, Red, he can't be kept alive. Even with the two points up in the shell, it's not enough. Aggressive turns on that Pulse Nova, ensuring the kill onto the Dragonite. Night, but not before he brings down the vengeful spirit. We've gone basically chaos strat in the bottom. Whew. And C Deck fighting during the daytime suddenly a lot more favorable for them. Meanwhile, top lane Kabu and XZ battling it out here. Nether Strike available will not latch on to Kabu, who manages to blink out in time. But it seems chaos is now starting to favor C Deck now that it is daytime. Night Soccer just doesn't quite have the vision advantage, and DK's haste room, once that wore off, uh, suddenly Tongfu were kind of lacking answers to the damage output, and even with the squishy heroes like Lashrak. Just tanking up with wands, strength threads, bracer. I think Seeker found the right answer to the constant Tongfu fighting. But it went on for so long that fight. They talked about the haste room wearing off. Uh, he he looked in and then he then he ran out and then he went in back in again. Then he then he ran out. Then he had a second look just as he was leaving and then boom boom. The rest of C deck arrives. So he gave him all the time in the world to react. 
So we'll see what, let's see they look to do with the rest of this daytime. It will be night fairly soon once more, and that's where Tongfu will probably go back to what was working for them. They'll have Ravage available, then maybe look to use this smoke here, which is already being picked up by the Chen, maybe in anticipation for uh, the next Ravage use, or possibly in the next nighttime. They might, might want to be really careful. We've got your mm -hmm. Scepter now over on Aggressive, so they've got ways to stop uh, that Nia Stalker from charging in, and also ways to just counter-initiate. Speaking of charge, charge, the Spirit Breaker coming after Kabu, and he actually bumps into Red, but then goes, he actually pushes him back. The Ravage That's is a Bell, so they don't want to commit with too many heroes into this, not unless they really have to, but here's that, here's that Yule Scepter going to work, and the Split Earth. There is enough damage? Yes, there is. Even going through the hand of God. Turn on the Pulse Nova just in case. Nice little game. That's the reveal of the Yule Scepter, but hey, even now that you know it's up, it's not going to be something you can really deal with too well if you're the Queen of Pain. It's worth it anyway. Like you, you got, you got a kill on a call with the first reveal of an yeah. item. Like you never really ask much more, but they're going to get more. Pushing into that tower, but they're not going let to let them have it for free. There's a lot of support rotating up. Yeah, five seconds on the Queen of Pain. They'll get here in time to defend this one. The tower's being dropped into Nye range now. The C Cardi is, is doing too much work for C-Deck. They haven't got the best initiation. They have to come from a range form drag. I mean, it's a great initiation if you can get if you can get close enough for it. But during daytime, C-Deck will likely see you coming and could counter-initiate with a Yules on the Dragonite to set up a stun. But but C-Deck don't want any part of this, man. Yeah. They don't want any part of this. So they, you've, you've Nighttime's just, coming. You're almost taking out the tier 1 tower. You're right. <laughs> What is this like? Is, is this like winter or something now? Is, <laughs> you know, you know nothing, John Gods. Well, C deck know what's up. They're gonna completely ditch this top T1 tower, and this is the point where Chen Dragonite kind of reaching their, have, finding their strides, able to just take whichever towers on the map they like. They actually saw the TP in from Red Light Strike Array is gonna connect. There's not enough mana for a Lacuna, which means he can get the Ravage off with the follow-up signs to the leader, but the Yule Scepter from Aggressive doesn't have split out the Babel, so he can just walk in, and, uh, well, he's already been burned as well. He gets the sec second stun, and it's Shiki going to work. 128, 147, 168 points of stolen damage. This is all gonna be now put into, into Kabu. Swapped out, but a little bit too early, though, so he was still capable of blinking away. But the damage will now go into the towel. One loss for the price of three. Melody Lovers really wants to come back into this fight to try and kill off Aggressive with the charge in. Follow-up stuns. The Sonic Wave spills out so far. Finally, he'll end the killing spree. And Kabu! Whoa! Dude! <laughs> <laughs> this... Ooh, he did not take into account the one charges on Razor. <laughs> you know, never underestimate those magic wands. <laughs> it's just like it's, like a, it's like a suicide quap though. Like you, you know you're gonna die for the kill, but is yep. it really worth it? And I like what Shiki did. He he kind of turned around once he reached the uphill and kind of ran back towards the river. Yeah, the stream hit, but Queen of Pain was like not expecting it. Didn't get the right clicks off immediately and kind of helped him survive a bit longer as well with the uh, one plus bottle charges. So. Hey, Shiki gets rewarded with a, a refill in his bottle, and he's it, good to good to go. He could have blinked back into his own tower as well. That, that, that was the yeah. other option, like you know, slightly defensive nature. Um, okay, that's a Laguna and a charge in to get to kill off a Chen. At least he gets his hand of God off cooldown, but he's not going to be able to use it or want to use it just to kill, to save himself. And SB, well, we're playing left for dead now. Um, Lena, dying in the jungle. That's a glimmer cape on Dragonite as well. I've seen this once or twice. It's a Unconventional pickup, but something if you're trying to take down towers early and worried about burst damage from a, a kind of like a Yule's Lena, or in this case it's a Yule's Leshrac, a really nice pickup. He can use it to save himself or his teammates when they get lifted up in the air. Protection. And also just forces C Deck into buying detection in itself, dust sentries, which is at this stage of the game a fairly expensive investment for supports who are kind of struggling to stay on the board. With, with all these kills that have been happening, like we're going at two kills a minute right now. But Lena's still going to buy up the sentries anyway, so they, they saw it here. But it's, it's this question mark now. Do you try and de-ward with this, or are you using it to ensure that you can kill off the DK? You can maybe set even a trap against the DK. Then they're just going to smoke up and go. Uh, the Observer Ward for the Radiant side is a long, long way up on that top lane. So they, they didn't, didn't see the smoke happening. They'll walk past the double stack and come in behind Kabu. So it's up to Razor to force a blink. But at the same time, we've got Kabu playing bait.
Hmm. Looks like they, they probably know Tide's running Radiant towards them, but they're not going to go for Tide. Tide just ravages the Lead Lead of visible the lane. Wave of Terror is going to connect this Ravager. Still available for Red, but they actually charge into him. The Ravager will fly out, connecting on three, but you've already lost the Titan directly after it. It will be the cost of the little track for this. And Shiki, he's in, but he hasn't started the static link yet. And the Sonic Wave hits so hard on C-Deck. Lashrak buying back. He's running in from the Tier 1 tower, but the rest of his team has gone south into the river area. And maybe they can turn plus a field damage to Chen. There's not much more to give. Where is it? Where is the extra help? It came in from that Nether Strike, looking to chase him even further. But the fire splitting up. Aggressive wants to chase into Kabu with the Pulse Nova, but all he's getting right now is creeps. And now you all set the rub. Light Strike Array, a little bit late, but it's still going to work with the follow-up stuns. While the Spirit Breaker running to the trees where he thinks it's safe, but with the Urn Charge sticking him down, not to mention the DK and the Night Stalker on his tail, he will also fall. 18 18 is the end, but Sidek did pick up the tower. Sidek had to buy back Less Track to make that happen, though. And that was a pretty expensive buyback for aggressive. So the actual gold game is pretty favorable for Tong Fu, about a 2.5k gold swinging going their way. And I think Tong Fu will be pretty happy with the outcome of that one. Dragonite picks up quite a good chunk of gold. He's working on his BKB and just a slightly overly aggressive play fighting into a Ravage like that. Yeah, they killed the Tide pretty quickly, but as long as he throws the Ravage, that's his job done. I'm actually still wondering if it's really that bad aggressive. Um, he's got his solo kill on Red. Like, well, he's he actually killing this? off a Tidehunter. Yeah. Uh, he had enough mana for it. He didn't want to go for the Yule Scepter and stun. That wasn't the way he's going to find that kill. Uh, but I'm actually wondering if Siddiq is too sad about this. Because they've managed to take out all the tier three, uh, all the tier one towers yep. for Tongfu. They've only lost one, and this opens them up for a lot more killing potential, like what they're doing right now on the Chen. Uh, they can move so much more freely. The Gloomer oh, Cave is going to give a counter attack right now from the Dragon Knight. Does he have enough? Okay, you're right. The Queen of Pain is going to drop up there too. And Garda, well, he's actually going to escape from this. Like DK doesn't have enough to chase him down, so you've just lost three heroes across the map and your tier two towers dropping. And all those fights that they were taking that were more 50-50-ish were during the night time. That was C-Deck playing aggressive, taking fights against Night Stalker when Night Stalker is meant to be at its strongest. And now it's day, yeah, the pickoffs just come that much easier for C-Deck, who have a medallion on their side as well if they want to consider Roshan at the, in the near future. They've got mech, they've got medallion, they've got great just team fight during the day and even at night we can see that they're just willing to take whatever fights come their way <laughs> well 18 to 21 c deck i'm wondering how long it's also going to be before they pop in and try and kill off Rosham. like what else do they need to get have, have enough damage to kill him I, they have enough now it's just going to be kind of slow and maybe gives too much time for tongfu to swoop on in with a tide ravage night stalker can pop ultimate and they can look to contest it so and maybe wait till the ravage is on cooldown you got a couple of heroes up or yeah I, I think the bigger thing is it's just not a good use of their time they're better off farming the lanes farming their jungle and push and applying pressure whereas you go roshan you're just giving too much breathing room for tongfu so that it's one of those things where it's like you're not actually even if you secure roshan it takes so long that you, during that time the you don't get any advantage it. yeah well, they have a double damage room from the Spirit Breaker, but yeah, he's charging down on Kabu. He runs directly past Red, but decides not to Nether Strike, but Red's moving over for him. And they could potentially have a crack at this. More help. Last Strike Array connected for the leader with the Laguna Blade. The Ravage is going to pop. It does reach the BS as well as the poor little Lena. And it helps with the, with the Sonic Wave to find these kills aggressive. Looking for the stun, actually going to airball it right between three of the heroes. You've got more support coming in behind from the Spirit Breaker, but the Night Stalker up in the air. Still no big stuns, but the Pulse Nova's now kicking in. And what he's trying to do, he's trying to stop the Tornado to start with, hoping for a first hit bash. That doesn't happen from the Spirit Breaker. And again, just baiting out that Nether Strike on the Kabu. But they lose two, but you blew the Ravage. And you got your support still up. Yeah, still, yeah, pretty good for Tong Fu. Still, I think they almost got a few more after that, but they'll look to just regroup here. That was during the daytime. They had to pop the Night Stalker Darkness, but that's what it's there for. And C Deck not finding what they were kind of hoping for. They got down some deep observer wards kind of in this Radiant Jungle, but that alone is not going to cut it here, especially once nighttime arrives once again. And that's where I feel Tong Fu still have great ways to team fight if they can do so. Kabu, uh, Kabu, Kabu. Yeah. That's Even if he blinks oh, yeah. right now, the charge is still happening on yeah. him, and he knows he's dead. Aggressive will finish the job before XE will arrive. This last track is just becoming a big problem. Dude, look at the SB as well. This guy's got 2.8k gold. He just buys a straight Shadow Blade. And, oh, are we actually going to get to the point, too, where we see the Silver Edge start to arrive? What, what does that actually remove from Night Stalker? The... Like, when, when you break him, hmm. like, what does that actually remove from I guess his Hunter in the Night, but not... You so probably so, remove so it'll, 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 remove, it'll remove his, his attack speed and his move speed. I, I, you know, there's a lot of crazy interactions with that. 
Yeah, I, 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 meant that. This, this, this <laughs> I kinda, assume so. This is kind of what I want to have Cape on because I was asking yep. all these mechanical questions of him yesterday on the couch. It's like, let me just look at my book of armaments. Yeah. <laughs> I think more likely we're going to see the BKB though. You're against Tide. You're against Dragonite, Queen of Pain. Like you, you want to BKB. You, you're talking for, for SF as well. Like after you pick up the Shadow Blade. On uh, on Spirit Breaker? Oh, sorry, Spirit Breaker. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, said that, didn't I? <laughs> I? I think eventually you're going to be looking to upgrade to the Silver Edge, but BKB is just so nice against DK Stun, Shadow Strike, Scream, Scream from the Queen of Pain, Good. Tide Ravage. Trouble, trouble. They have to try and turn around and fight. Nice Stalker up into the air. Aggressive. We'll be able to get the Sun off here, and maybe they can kill off the Nice Stalker straight away. Yes, they can with the help of Laguna Blade, but Tide has a Blink Ravage. So I say that. He actually has the Blink, but no Ravage. They just try and battle Dragonite, bouncing back across the board, and he's going to go down on maybe, yeah, he will. The Glimmer Cape does not protect him enough from C deck. So you've just lost the DK, you've just lost the Night Stalker, and th if this all happened 15 seconds later, Tom Fu would have been in a great position. Yeah. They they need to remember fight around your ultimates. That's where things were looking okay for them, and they had Tide Ravage and, and the Sonic Wave. I think we're about to YOLO. I think we're actually about to YOLO! Razor and the Sonic Wave! They hit four, but Lean is the only one that's dead. The Rage is still in here. He stole 28 points of damage, but that's only because Queen of Pain died so quickly. The stun missing from Aggressive. He's not using this Yule set to set up all the time. Um, but Yolo way, is right. You're still gonna, <laughs> you're still gonna get a couple of heroes on the way out for C deck. Yep. And they they hold the Aegis, which is Whew. just as important over on the Razor. A lean up for two big ulti cooldowns and kills on Tide and Queen of Pain. Not worth it in the slightest for Tongfu. I can understand why they go for that. They get that. If Tide was there a second earlier, they maybe snatch the Aegis. Get another kill or two, keep someone like the Queen of Pain alive as she blinks in and could be a completely different story and outcome. Oh, nice stalker. TP up. There's no stuns until Garda. <laughs> Yo. No bashes. He also had swap on cooldown. It was a level two, which would have been enough range for him, but it was still on cooldown. Yeah. Pretty hard to get a bash when 50% miss chance as well, so... <laughs> Suddenly that bash goes from 17% to 8.5. Why, why does life have to be so hard for C-Deck Gods? Yeah. So hard. <laughs> so Hunter in the Night. And Darkness not disabled by Break. Attack. So just the Dragon Blood and Kraken Shell. Okay. Still effective up against both of them. Yep. And we got especially the annoying Tide Hunter if you want to try go on him and chain stun him during the during the break, because he won't be able to get the Kraken off to Ravage. <laughs> so C Deck can kind of take towers at will here. Even well most importantly right now because no the two ultis are yeah, no Ravage, no Sonic Wave. And this is the last outer tower on the map and if there was a team to take all the outer towers by 23 minutes, you'd say it'd be Tong Fu's draft, but c -Deck have made it work with uh, what they've got. That's what it was meant to be. It was meant to be Tong Fu pushing earlier, and that's kind of why I was hoping for something more like a Pugna. Uh, just because then you could you could force the issue. If, if you waited for c -Deck to find us a couple of levels, then they can respond. Like, even level 4, level 5 is enough for them to respond. Especially when they're able to run dual lanes. The, the, their level increase was even more rapid than I was expecting. Well, c just posturing on the high ground here. They are not afraid of anything here. Aggressive as nine blood soon charges. Shiki has the ages. They've got a mech available. And T3 tower needs to get glyph soon. Probably during the next edict, we'll see Tong Fu chew through their glyph. But I would be very careful if I was C-Deck right now. I know they want the Razor's Aegis to pop and to soak up as much damage as possible for it. Uh, but you've got Ravager cooldown in six seconds. And that's the go time. You've already got Darkness, which is which can be activated if you really require it. And here's the first stun. Blink in. Big Ravage. Try to swap him out. He'll save the Lashrak, but you've lost the Razor from the start. Aggressive moving back. He's actually got the space as well as the stun. Kambu getting back bashed around. But they've still lost one for two at this point. But it's only the two supports. The three cores from Sidek are still alive. There's no stolen damage. That Sonic Link didn't didn't last long enough. So you've lost Shiki. XE trying to bash into the tiles, but nothing's really coming from this. Another stun missing from Aggressive. And, uh, well... well it doesn't matter. He'll still take the Night Stalker anyway. <laughs> he just scurries on out of there. And he's going to farm some neutrals on the way. <laughs> he's not afraid. That's, that would have been such a huge hero to kill off. Yep. Like, the fact that he survived, they didn't take his Bloodstone charges away. Yep. Unfortunately for Razor, he didn't get any Static Link off, even after Respawn and Ages. I think he like lost his Static Link, and if he'd stolen some damage there, it would have been a lot easier for C-Deck to take that fight. How did it break to start with? I didn't see. I'm not sure. I either it instantly got broken, or maybe on the uh, when he died with the Aegis, it, it broke. But mm. that True, so it, you start it, and then all of a sudden you, you instantly die. You don't yeah. keep your stolen damage when you come back up. So we'll see. See, I, I still feel like that's okay for C deck. It's you trade the big ulti cooldowns, you almost kill a tier three tower, and most importantly, your Leshrac stays alive while getting a ton of kills, and that's a completed BKB now for aggressive. So that was 
the outcome of that fight was not too bad for, for C deck. I'm wondering how, actually, is Razor buying... I think he's buying a BKB. Yeah, he... Oh, no. Uh, Razor, yeah, Ogre Club. He'll, he'll be getting a BKB, probably. Because I was wondering if he'd just get the Aghanim Scepter and try and finish this earlier. I think the BKB does a similar thing. Yeah, it's not going to help kill the buildings faster, but it, well, it does indirectly by just having the Razor able to high ground siege while popping yeah. BKB. I suppose also up against Ravage. Like, it's just yeah. this, what are you going to do, son? I, you, you got nothing. The Spirit Breaker is going to go for the Silver Edge. He's not going to finish up a BKB okay. here. Um, but the BKB is done full of track. So with your two primary tanking cores in the front lines, that's fine. And if you can just bring down the DK or the Night Stalker, uh, or the DK or the Tide Hunter without any kind of real problems, then also success, yeah. success, success for Cedic. Especially if you find the time. Just the fact you can take out Kraken Shell can mean a whole lot if you're trying to chain stun a Tide down. He's getting so tanky though. He's almost finished the full pipe. He's still got just 1200 HP. There's plenty of nuke damage to, to burst him down. And that's where you can actually deal with the Ravage. But they're just going to go push again. They say, look, you guys have no no Ravage. And that's, well, actually, you do in two seconds. So but yeah. be careful. But he blinked a little bit earlier. So the, the uh, blink tag is still on cooldown for the moment. And aggressive. He's actually focusing on this melee rack. So I'm surprised not chipping away at the range racks here just to get something. I think the alarm bells are ringing, as, ringing on the C deck side that Look at the a sentries. lot of time has passed. Sentry and sentry. They're, they're, they're trying to buy the cover for uh, the Spirit Breaker to get in, hence they threw, they threw down their own sentry ward. But there's two of them down at the moment. Okay, well, aggressive still in the front lines with BKB. He needs to be fast fingers on that before the Ravage hits him. It really should just be this Yule Scepter initiation. It's, it's, it's something though which I haven't been seeing aggressive using, like even like just to secure the, the fights. Like all he's got to do is stun, but he keeps on throwing out the Pulse Nova and the Edict and Lightning to try and ensure the kills with just raw damage. I think he knows if he tries to go in, he's going to get like Blink Ravage, DK stunned, unless he preemptively oh, DK's DK, DK out so far with, with the Dragon Tower. Out comes your Ravage. Wow. Only three heroes. The Yule Scepter protects the Lina here, but you've lost the Razor almost instantly. The charge in from the Spirit Breaker, focusing down the Ted. He doesn't get Neck or Hand of God off here. And that time, they also focus out the Queen of Panda back line. The two supports together. Now they swap him and into also that little bit of a bump dunk back from the Spirit Breaker. The Nether Strike from him. The Night Stalker will buy back into this and Dragon Knight still looking to fight. Aggressive's gonna drop, so they've lost their Latrak, they've lost a large amount of their pushing power, and the Lina trying to use the physical damage, got some Fiery Soul charges to help her out with this, and they just bump back red again. The Spirit Breaker is now the man doing the heavy lifting for Cedek, playing around his own supports who don't have stuns. They do have Glimmer Cape, but that Sentry was still down, so they're not perfect where they are but they're still alive and they're still fighting. And a blink attack. away to safety just in time before the attack reaches. Yeah, and Leshrac maybe could have survived with a bit more defensive play there, but it doesn't matter. They're still coming out on top of this fight. Ty going to TP in with a, with a pipe, and I think that's going to signal the retreat for C-Deck. Yep. We'll have a tight blinking after them soon, but this is a pretty healthy C-Deck squad. Yeah, he's got no stuns though, so we can't cancel any of the TPs which are available, and you've still got Glimmer Cape from Garda. Yep. So it's, it's not a major problem for them. And, well, and in fact, C-Deck should just go again. Like they, they really need to finish this bottom lane. There's no Ravage for 74 seconds. This is a bigger window of opportunity yes. than they had previously. It's a good window. I still, It's not like essential, though. They've got, they're have got scaling well to the late game. It feels like the DK's kind of starting to fall off a little bit. The Queen of Pain's been struggling to stay alive. Kabu has 11 deaths on this Queen of Pain, and that's going to continue here in mid, it looks like. Yep. Charge him and aggressive, following up with a stun, and then do the pulse. The Hand of God will kick in. And a Yule Scepter, there's no Split Earth available, but that's why Aggressive waits a little bit longer. And Kabu, well, he gets the blink, and he blinked okay. up. He actually blinked north into the tree line, and they saw which direction it was. Even though it's a little bit deceptive, he's not in this fight, which is the more critical thing. The chance going to drop, he uses Hand of God to protect the Queen of Pain, so there's no extra healing, and Spirit Break is just charging in. The Quop is in no position to fight. They've lost U9 as well, and, uh, well, that's his BK beat down, buying back. He has Dragon Fall, but you're not going to get much more from it. Copper has no TP for another five seconds, and even then has to TP back, heal up at the fountain before any defense can be mounted, and that's going to be at least bottom lane of Rax, maybe mid getting poked at, but with Glyph available, at least Tong Fu may be able to take a fight before they lose the mid lane as well. But they've got to wait for Ravage eight seconds, and more importantly, wait for the Dragon Knight. And that's just too long. Like, like you're going, you're going up against Edict. This is this is gonna rip through your buildings. You've just used your last fortification. Thirty seconds until Tong Fu's back at full strength. And what have you got still coming up from Tong Fu? You've got so, you got a fair amount of mana on the Spirit Breaker, so we could just Silver Red charge in. 
and remove again that Kraken shell if he wants to. You got the jump in, Ravage can be blown, but it only connects on the Lashrak, and he's already so damn tanky. Turns around with the line, he's slowing down Red, allowing him to get his own stun. The Meg Charge will be there this time from Chen, but you've already lost Red, and Shiki, he never gets to deal so much so much damage because they keep killing the heroes too quickly. <laughs> First world problems. Yeah, it's, uh, it's problems, man, and GG, the problems are too much for Tong Fu. C-Deck will take game number one, and this will secure them a spot up against Ehome in the winner's bracket yep. final for the Chinese qualifier. Definitely to me, C-Deck has been the most impressive of any of the teams in either group, and they look like amazing contenders moving forward. I mean, a lot of people doubted this team after maybe left and joined LGD, but showing that they are not missing anything, even with that young star gone. And I think even going up against Ehome, I would even consider them slight favorites based on how they've played and how 